Lord God, how sweet it is to be able to worship you together this morning. Lord, to remember what you did on the cross, to remember what you did for us, to save us from our sins. Lord, what a sweet, sweet time it is to be together. Lord, use the words that I say to help us just grow in our love for you and in our worship for you this morning. In your name, amen. We're at the part of the service this morning where we celebrate the Lord's table. And as we start to bring back uh, Next Generation Ministries, we're also bringing this portion of the service back so that we can celebrate it on a weekly basis. I've really missed that. I'm really excited to be able to do this together. And so today I want to start by looking at a couple of passages uh, where the Lord's table was introduced. So if you can turn with me to Luke 22. We'll, we'll talk about it this morning. The setting for this chapter is pretty amazing. Um, Jesus miraculously creates a context for them to be able to observe the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. And so let's start together in verse 7 and read it together. Then came the first day of unleavened bread, in which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover for us, that we may eat it. They said to him, Where do you want us to prepare it? And he said, When you have entered the city, a man will meet you carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house that he enters, and you shall say to the owner of the house, The teacher says to you, Where is the guest room in which we may eat Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large furnished upper room and prepare it, prepare it there. And they left and found everything just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. That's crazy, right? Like, it almost seems like the disciples had grown so accustomed to his miracles that they just were like, okay, let's go find this guy and be introduced. Um, and we're going to look at the next several verses in a minute. But I want to jump past it and look at verse 21. But behold, the hand of the one who is betraying me is with mine on the table. For indeed, the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to discuss among themselves which one of them was going to do this thing. And there arose also a dispute among them as to which one of them was regarded to be the greatest. That took a quick turn. They went from a miraculous setting to a worshipful remembering to a horrific betrayal and to a selfish argument. I hate to say it, but that's easy for us to do as well. Let's remember that for a minute and turn to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is where we'll be. This book was written about 20 years later. 20 years is a pretty long time, but it also seems to pass in like a minute. Um, this Easter, I think, will be our 20th anniversary as a church. And those of you that, like me, have been here since the beginning, that both seems like forever ago and yesterday. Um, and that's the amount of time that passes between Luke 22 and the time when 1 Corinthians was written. And so let's look at 1 Corinthians 11, and we're actually going to start in verse 17. But in giving this instruction, I do not praise you, because you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, so that those who are approved may become evident among you. Therefore, when you meet together, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in your eating, each one of you takes his own supper first, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses in which you can eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this, I will not praise you. And then if you keep reading, it is also the familiar passage from Paul on how we need to conduct ourselves in taking communion. I find it terribly interesting and pretty much a warning for us to see that the context of the instruction of communion are people that, frankly, are not taking it seriously. 
Something happened between the upper room and 1 Corinthians where the disciples realized the importance of this practice and decided to institute it as a regular practice within a church gathering. They learned that this is a time of worship to remember the amazing work that Jesus did on the cross, and I'm so thankful for that. However, we can fall into the same trap that the disciples did or that the Corinthian church did. So as we prepare our hearts for the Lord's table, what can we learn from this? Christian, I want to speak to you first. It is easy, almost reflexively easy, to allow rituals of the Christian faith to lose their worshipful purpose. It is easy to lose fo the focus that God intends on a ritual that he created with a purpose. We need to remember that purpose. We need to keep watch over ourselves and each other as we enter a worship service so that we do what we're here for, worship. The service is not a social gathering, but a time to remember our God, our one true God, and worship him. The service is not a social gathering, but a time to remember our Savior, the one that took away our sins. Our priority this morning should be to worship him. And there's another group here. There are some here that are not worshipers of God. Maybe you're here because you've always been a part of a church and you feel comfortable here. Maybe you're here because a friend or family member brought you. We're so glad to have you here and would love to talk to you about why we worship Jesus. However, during communion this morning, please let the cup and bread pass by. This time of communion is a time of worship reserved for those that put our trust in Jesus. If you have any questions about that, please see me or any one of the elders or the person that you came with after the service. We'd love to talk to you about our Savior. We're going to take communion together today. And since this is a time of worship, um, I want to worship together. The men will come through the aisles and offer a cup with a cracker on top of it. And if you'd like to participate today, um, that would be great. Um, if you're watching from home, we'd love for you to, to participate as well. Um, you may not have the same juice or the cracker. Be thankful for that. But you can use it, at whatever you have at home, <laughs> and worship Jesus and remember his body and blood with us. Men, will you come forward, and then we'll take communion together in a few minutes.